Hello, third grade. I am just finishing up coloring in my fish from the last time we were together. We created these awesome fish and we are now going to add the background to our project. I hope that you guys had a great weekend. It's Tuesday and it is our art day. I miss being with you guys so much and I wish we could be back in school. But until then, we will keep on doing art because art is something that you can do that can always make you feel better. It can take your mind off of troubles. It can help you to relax and it can make you forget your worries. And so even as we're doing this art today, I want you to just relax. Don't worry about anything else that you have to do right now and just get lost in coloring this awesome art. All right, so for today, what we have to do is we have to do the background and we're gonna add some details. Okay, so for starters, our background is going to be cool colors. We decided that the fish were going to be warm colors and the background is going to be cool colors. When you look at your color wheel, that you guys remember you made with all the objects. When you look at your color wheel, you'll see all the warm colors are on one side and all the cool colors are on the other side. This is a look at the finished pr project that we're going to do. And in each box, I'm going to choose two colors, two cool colors in each box. And I'm going to fade from one to the other. The other word that we can use for that is called gradient. I'm gonna make a gradient from one color to the next. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your fish paper out. You should be up to this point. If you're not up to this point, then take a moment, pause the video and color your fish with warm colors, yellow, orange, darker red orange, red, and I have like kind of a, a pinkish red, which I love. And so that's your gradient for your fish. Now, the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna color in the background. Some of you guys made your fish small. Maybe you wanna get a piece of, of printer paper and just use the whole paper instead of making them so tiny. If you made them tiny and you wanna keep on going with that size, then draw a rectangular box around your fish so that you can create these little puzzle pieces and divide your background into segments, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of my warm colors on the side and I'm gonna get out my cool colors. What are my cool colors? Blue, indigo, turquoise, purple, any color violet and lavender, green, all different color greens, light green, dark green, yellow green, and I said the blues, we got the blues, and that's everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take two colors. I'm gonna take light green and dark green. And I'm gonna start in any any shape. So I'm gonna start with this one. Okay, it's like a four-sided shape. And I'm gonna start with the lighter color. And I'm gonna color the shape in all the way with the lighter color for this one. There's, like, there's many ways to do this, but this is one way to do it, to get a good result. And your goal is now that looks fine like that, but your goal is to blend these two colors together. And let me really quick show you on my scrap paper the two colors we have. I have a dark green and a light green, okay? So if I just color half light green and half dark green, that is not a blend, is it? No, I need to overlap the two colors to make a blend. So I'm gonna color the whole area with the light green 
And then I'm going to start to blend with the darker green. The way I blend is I start coloring really hard on one side, really firm pressure, and then I lighten up my pressure as I go to almost no pressure at all. Okay? So what you'll see is I go from really dark, a lot of pressure, and I lighten it up to almost no pressure at all. See how it's like a fade? Can you guys see that? All right, so I'm gonna go back to my fish. I'm gonna go on this side, I'm gonna start with the dark color and I'm gonna color a band of really, really dark green. And then I'm gonna go lighter and lighter all the way across until I get about halfway and then I'm gonna be so light I'm going to step back and look at it and see where can I maybe make it darker and where can I blend it more. And see, I have a gradient from dark green to light green or from light green to dark green. I'm going to pick another, another area, one that's easy. Like this is a really hard area. You might want to separate a weird shaped area like that into two. But for right now, I'm going to pick this area. It's pretty easy. And I'm going to do um, turquoise. Turquoise and blue. And let's try these two colors out. I like to try my colors out on a scrap piece of paper because then I can see how hard I have to press to make them blend. Okay, I think that can work really well. So for this one, I'm going to color from the edge. I'm going to color color the whole thing. And now I'm going to use the dark blue. I'm going to use it on this side. I'm going to start over here and I'm going to color as hard as I can over here. Okay, and then I'm going to color lighter, like medium. That's medium. And then I'm going to color really, 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 really light right here. And that's where I colored really light. And you see it's a fade from one color to the next. Okay. Now I'm going to start with blue here. Really dark. This is the second way I can do this. Is I'm going to color really dark. And then I'm going to color medium. And then I'm going to color light. And then... I'm gonna take my second color, like I think I'm gonna use lavender for this one. This is like a pretty color purple. I'm gonna color dark here. And then I'm gonna color medium once I start to overlap. I'm gonna color medium and then really, really light. And see right here is where I made the switch and where the blue and the purple are going together. So it's a second technique that you can use. And the second technique, the first technique is probably easier to do, but the second technique will give you better results. So it's up to you the way that you want to do it. Um, I'm giving you the choice and the option of how to choose how you want to do it. I'm going to use purple dark this is a little bit darker of a purple like a violet and I'm gonna color it about a third of the way and then I'm gonna go medium I'm really trying not to color in my fish notice I just put my finger there so that I don't go past my own line right and then I'm gonna go super light super light super light and then I'm gonna pick my second color, which is gonna be blue. This is a lighter blue, like a turquoise blue. And I'm gonna color it darker on this side. Another thing you can do if you don't wanna go over the edge of your fish, okay, is you can take a scrap piece of paper and you can put that there and then that will protect your fish as well. But you have to be careful because down here, I don't want to miss that corner. I can always go back. 
and that will help you so you don't have to worry so much about not coloring on the fish but if i color all the way over here look what happens there's a line so i have to make sure i fill it in when i come back and there is my gradient that looks pretty cool i think it looks good and a little darker there and blend it in a little bit more over here Sometimes I just look at it and I think it needs to be blended. And that's where you um, can use your artist judgment. Okay, cool. I'm going to do this next shape here. And I think we will do, let's do turquoise to green. Let's do turquoise on this side and green on that side. I'm going to start with turquoise. I'm going to color it nice and deep. I like to color around the shapes first. So if you're using the paper technique, that's fine. But I, I like to color around the shape of the fish so that I have a little bit more of a buffer zone and I don't overlap too much. Because I don't want any blue in that yellow because that's gonna turn it green. And then I will have a green tail on my fish and I didn't want that. Here's where I'm gonna fade. I'm gonna go lighter. And lighter on my pressure. Ta-da! And I said we're going to do green, right? Okay. Turning your paper, I know it's a little, makes you a little dizzy, but turning your paper can help you because there's always one way that you feel more comfortable coloring. Like, I don't feel comfortable coloring up and down. I feel comfortable coloring side to side. Probably most people do. Okay? And that is going to help me so that I feel most comfortable and then I can do my best work. Okay, now I'm pressing, I was pressing hard, now I'm pressing medium, which is hardly at all. And then when I press light, I lift it up so that I don't feel it at all. I don't hardly put any pressure on the medium. When you're working with a lighter color, it's easier. When you're working with a dark color, Mm, it's a lot, it's a lot harder. So you have to be more careful. Okay. And we're going to do this with every single piece of your background. And that's how you're going to finish this video up. I said this video, I mean this project. That's how you're going to finish this project. I'm going to work on some green. This is a super dark green. I think it is so so rich and beautiful color. Okay, look, nobody's perfect. I colored over the line. It happens. Do your best. And the thing is, is as you practice coloring, it's going to get easier and easier. When you, if you haven't colored in a while, you know, some of us haven't colored since we were young. If you haven't colored in a while, then pushing light on the crayon is not something that's going to be easy for you. You know, sometimes we have to practice. And the more you practice, trust me, the easier it's going to get. And the better your results are going to be. Because your hand is going to be stronger and you're going to have more control. I really like that blend. It is very, very cool. Okay, so. I'm going to do my next area. I'm going to do this area nice and dark which looks so cool. And make it as light as I can. This is a dark color. When I use a dark color, it's hard to get it to be smooth, but try your best. And I'm gonna use lavender on the other side. See how that blends. one was okay I don't know the really light and the really dark it's not doesn't blend as well together so I might try to use a little bit of a little bit of a darker purple yeah I think that looks a little better I, yeah, I like that better so you're gonna do this in the whole area I'm going to use turquoise right here. And be really careful. 
that I don't color inside my fish. dark green bright green this is a brighter green the edges are hard because it wants to fold back up but if you hold on to it then you'll have an easier time so hold it with your non non dominant hand and that will be better great and I have one, two, three, four more spaces to do. If you're tired, take a break, pause the video, no problem. Take your time, there's no rush on this. And don't forget, I'm a lot older than you. I've been doing art for a whole lot longer than you. So I may be going faster than you are, but that's no reason to worry. Just pause the video and then start back up again. It's a dark blue. This is going to be a tough blend. Why is it going to be hard? Because this is really light and this is really dark. So I'm going to have to really be smooth when I go medium and light and even lighter. And I, see, that's too hard of a line for me. I want to go smoother, as smooth as you can. And okay. Now I'm going to add more green because I feel like maybe that will help smooth it out. I think it did. All right. And now I have three more spaces. Here's one. This is dark turquoise. I love this color. And I'm going to blend dark turquoise with purple. Light. And then turn it around so I can color sideways again. Start with purple. I'm going to hold the corner so it doesn't pop up on me. Ta-da! more if you made it this far you are a champion I am so proud of you I have a green color I haven't used any green at the top so I'm going to spread my green around this is a nice color On the other side of this, I think I'm going to use light green. I think that will be cool. It'll be a nice blend. I think that came out good. And remember, when we put two one color on top of each other, it's called layering or overlap. When you do it with paint and you, you put one clear color on top, on top of a, another color, it's called glazing. And that's a whole nother kind of technique is when you're doing it with paint. We're using layering. And on the other side of this, I'm going to do light turquoise. Okay. Now, if you go back and look at our inspiration artist's work, you're going to see she had a lot of, 
a lot of pattern and the pattern created like a texture. And so we're going to do some pattern. We can use patterns in this in the form of dots, dashes, any kind of marks. And I'm going to let you use warm colors or cool colors. It's up to you. But I need contrasting colors. So over here, I'm going to start and I'm going to do little S's in a pattern. What makes it a pattern is I repeat the shape over and over again. Over here, I'm going to use little dashes. You like that? <laughs> Jordan likes it. I'm going to use some turquoise over here. Oh. The next thing we're going to do so we're going to add some color over here. I'm going to do some polka dots. Polka dots? What do you want to do over there, Jordan? Circles. Circles? Like polka dot circles? No, like regular circles. Oh, just circles. Okay. We'll do it. Let's do it with purple. This purple is pretty contrasty. Circles. Do you like that? Uh-huh. We could add some... Like small circles and large small, circles. We should add like some fancy coloring, like oh, for the fish definitely. Fishes have like fancy things on. Yeah, them. why don't we add some zigzags on the fish? The thing we do lines on him. Yeah. So you guys, you guys can go crazy. Yeah, go ahead, Jordan. Go ahead, do a couple of lines. Oh, cool. That looks good. I like that. I like that a lot. That looks nice. And I like working on it together because that's kind of fun, isn't it? Yeah. And what should we do for this one? Triangles? Would that be cool if we that was triangles? Triangles? Yeah. Hmm, let's pick a contrasting color. Ooh, how about long? Um, yeah. Triangles? Yeah. Might... It's kind of a blending color, but I can still see it. But I, I would long green and then put this over it. That'd be cool. Wait. Um, let's use this green. Let's use this For over the other here. Side. Let's use this over here and let's make some squiggles. I can hear what color blocking. I think that looks cool. We can also use the boldest color and we can use black, especially on some of the dark areas. Black will really show up. Doesn't that show up? Yeah, like if you do black, you can never be erase black. Then. That's so true. <laughs> so true because it's very Except dark. Except if you have white, it just be erase black. You know what I mean, Mom? Yeah, you're oh. right. Unless you paint it over it with white, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. absolutely. That is so true. And I'm going to do some stripes right over here. I think that looks cool. And you're going to add all of the stripes, all of the designs that you can think of. Okay, and I cannot wait to see how awesome your designs look. And with that being said, I am going to finish this up. And I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.